Hi everyone, welcome to Scrappy Kathy's channel. Thank you for stopping by. This is a new series called Mixed Media Mania. And we're going to be doing a lift of a mixed media um, original that was chosen by one of the team. And once a month we'll have a hop where everybody who wants to can join in. And we have a Facebook group that where you can uh, give your hand, try your hand at doing these lifts and you can update them on the main feed or in the album and uh, let everybody uh, see what you're doing. And it should be lots and lots of fun. So this is the first one. I love Seven Dot Studio. If you go out on Pinterest at all and check out some of their stuff, they have some of the most um, intricately detailed mixed media that you'll see out there. Most of it looks like there. That's not something I could ever reproduce. This one looked like something that might be doable. Uh, it's got the black and white photo with a lot of uh, layers behind it, some of them wonky. My photo's a little bit different orientation, and mine's not black and white. I ran it through a filter to get this. It's one of my favorite photos of my husband taken through the tropical greenery in our pool in, um, in our last home, and with the giant um, alligator uh, inflatable that the kids used to come down the slide on, and it was kind of right there. It just, I don't know, it just looked really cute. So lots of greens going on in there and some uh, corals and browns and some yellows in some of these close-up leaves that are out of focus. Um, so I'm going to try to reproduce this background, not reproduce it, but capture the mood of it. And I have no idea where I'm gonna start but let's do that now. <laughs> I have um, Dina Wakely gloss sprays that I might put as a finishing touch. I think I'll probably use this olive one a lot, but I've also got lemon and marine that I can kind of blend in some places. I have this uh, shimmer spray by Dilusions that's in a lime green that when you spray it on kind of turns a little bit uh, olive looking. And I've got this Nouveau Sparkle Spray and I forget what the color is. I'm not sure. Let's see, the color is Sparkling Mimosa. And it is a gold glitter spray that's really a rich coppery gold. So I thought that might be, might be interesting on there. I'm going to start with some Distress Oxides, kind of just, and this is to kind of provide the background, the, the base for everything else. That was uh, Gathered Twigs. It's what I use to distress uh, photos and embellishments. So I'll be using it later on. This one is Bundle Sage. This is Forest Moss, and I'm gonna maybe do that in a little different pattern. And Peel Paint. I'm going to pull the original out here just so that I can kind of see. There's going to be time and place for a lot of um, different uh, accents to be added to, to kind of capture some of these things that are going on there. Um, I'm going to spray with water and kind of let those colors move around and blend. And then I'm gonna move them around with my fingers just to kind of get the, the uh, I'm trying to make this paper look like it was never white. 
And this is a pretty effective way to do that. And I like that some of the, the angular lines there, so I really just kind of rubbed that those um, ink pads on here. I like that that yellower green from the olive colors and the forest moss are kind of coming through. That's a that's good. I'm going to add some more over in here just because I wasn't getting... Now, that was peeled paint. I, no, was that? Yeah, that was peeled paint I just used. And I'm surprised that it's got that much yellow in it, but um, I like that about it. So that's a, that's a, a good thing. I'm going to kind of go down the edges. And right now I'm going to go back to the um, gathered twigs and kind of get, um, get the look of kind of a distressed edge right there, an inked edge. And I'm going to put a little bit of that right in there and spray a little bit more water. Kind of move that around. Okay, I think I've covered enough white. Let me um, dry it. I, any white that's left or that's kind of showing through, I can add something to it after we kind of see where all the embellishments are going to go. As you notice in the original, there is a, um, I'm just inking the edges right now. And if some gets on the paper, that's kind of intentional. Um, there's the photo cluster over to the right and then an embellishment cluster to the left and a butterfly and some layers. And then the rest of it is kind of uh, the mixed media and the stamping. It's really um, kind of mixed media heavy here because you know that there were a million layers that went into achieving that look. And I'm going to try to do it with... Um, within the time parameters that I have for a reasonably, uh, a reasonable length video, which none of mine ever really are. Okay, now I'm going to take the, I'm gonna add some of the, some blue to this by spritzing a little of the, gloss spray, and then I'm going to take a little bit of paper towel and kind of move that around. I wish I had done that in a more circular fashion, but it's not, it's not bad. And what this does, if this certainly takes the gloss off of it, and I'm going to add some some pure uh, gloss to it again. But it this really stains the paper nicely. Uh, that's a that's a very good thing. Okay. Okay, so that that came out well. Now I'm going to go back with the um this is the olive gloss spray. That was marine. And 
And this is going to stay glossy. I'm going to let it just look like splatters or splashes on there. I'm going to I'm actually going to kind of blot it. I don't really want, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to decide where the stamping goes, and I'm going to do the stamping. And the stamping can have some layers on top of it. See, any any place that where the white is showing through, all I have to do is kind of rub with a towel that has a little color on it. And I've, I've kind of, I've gotten rid of that, that white. Okay, so I have selected a whole slew of visible image stamps. And I'm, I'm kind of going to just pull them out in order. I know I want to use something from each of these packs. I'm going to pull out my block and kind of do, I know I want the gears and so let's see, I'm just going to pick colors from the, the colors that I did. There, just for, I'm gonna move this around so that the, the stamping and that side embellishments kind of go over here. So I'm gonna go there with that. And it's okay if that's not a perfect image, there will be a million things layered on top of that. And that's okay by me. And I'm gonna do another secondary one that's going to be very subtle down here. Okay, so let me get that wiped off and put back here so that I can keep track of it. And then I'm going to pull this clock that's coming apart. There is a clock in the original, and I want this, and I want this one to stand out, so I'm going to stamp it in black. And if I need to subdue the color a bit, I can do that by layering some other colors on top of the stamp. but I kind of want it to be a fairly, um, okay, so that didn't really stamp. I didn't hold it right in the middle. So if I do this, there's always the chance that it will have, it will kind of, uh, come over and, and make a hazy looking thing. And that actually just kind of adds to the, um, it, it adds to the mood, if you will, of all of that. Uh, and what I'm doing here is just kind of getting a little bit of black ink around on the page just by touching the um, touching my uh, paper towel to this this just adds some grunge factor and I'm gonna do it a fair amount around here to kind of help with the look that this has been um, 
oh, altered, I'd say, by uh, to take away from the look of being stamped improperly, having a poor stamper. <laughs> the stamp is great, and I just didn't press down. My first pressing, I didn't, I pressed on the edges and not. And I do not have anything, um, I normally will have a, a surface underneath that um, where the stamp sinks down and that, that didn't happen. Okay, I've got one more stamp from this set that I wanna use and I'm gonna use the gathered twigs for it. And I'm gonna use it repeatedly. It's a, um, just a bunch of numbers can kind of go there. And again, you can see that I didn't press in the middle. And, and that's kind of okay. What I may be doing here is putting some flares in the middle of some of these things that, that uh, stamped him. Now see, that one came out just perfect. There, just a few of the numbers showing there. And same here. Okay, all right, so we're on our way to grungy town here. Um, let me wipe that off and I'll put this set aside. Now my next set, aside means on the floor. The next set has some uh, scripty, writing and I'm gonna put I'm gonna stamp that with let's say forest moss and this one I'm gonna stamp a little bit differently in that I'm gonna take it off the block and kind of just lay it down and, and press it in and, and kind of repeat that till I get a pretty good um, if I do it over this that just looks like the clock was a layer that was kind of behind it and similarly there Okay, it's really beginning. See how these layers just kind of start adding to the grunge look. Okay, that's my favorite stamp so far. And I use it all the time for grungy projects. It's one of my most used stamps. So let me put that one. I've also got on here uh, an, another set. This is called Meshelaneous. Let's see, this one that I just used is called Scripted Streets. This Meshelaneous has this stamp right here that's another well-loved stamp. And I'm going to use another of the colors here. I'm going to do this one in the um, kind of pale bundled sage color. And this one will just leave that look of uh, honeybee cells or whatever it is. that I love it every time I see that kind of peeking out of a mixed media page. And because it's light, it's actually showing up over top of the darker colors in an interesting way. So I'm just kind of taking it and moving it around 
and a lot of this, I'm kind of remembering that my photo is going to go here. Let me turn that over. There we go. Okay. Let's put that aside. So who didn't thunk? We started out with a white page there. I'm going to put this here because those stamps need to be washed. They're no longer sticking to the block. This one has some interesting uh, geometric things, and I kind of want to use one of the stamps here that I haven't used before. Oh, it's actually, you know, I haven't used any of this. I have another one that's similar to this. This one is going to be very interesting because I'm going to ink it up with the gathered twigs, and then I'm going to put different parts of it in different places on here, like kind of do that right there, and this right here, and maybe the whole thing up there. Oh, I love what that's adding to the mix here. I'm going to take the part that I really wanted to include, which was this hand, and I'm going to put it right there. It didn't fully stamp, and that's okay. I'll do another version of it right there. And let me do this kind of bit there. Okay. Uh, again, I'll put that aside and I'll wash that down. Here is one I especially love for this one bit right here <laughs> that looks like cracked glass or earth or something. And I'm going to do this in black. Um, I think we're this black is beginning to kind of stand out from all of the other colors we have. So I'm going to add some black accents in some areas that look like they could use some accenting. don't want to overdo this, but maybe a little bit right up here at this corner piece. Okay, so that's going to go off in the pile to be washed as well, and this one I've picked because it has these little circles. And I'm going to go back with one of the greens. I'll pick the peeled paint and do these. It's a little bit different look from this honeycomb cell, and it just adds a, a layer that almost looks like it's a lower, uh, kind of a behind layer. And I'm liking that. Put it halfway there. Just kind of get some on top of this blue and some secondary ones around. Okay, so we've kind of grunged that up quite a bit. I'm gonna put this aside. The other stamps, the only thing I need out of those is the butterfly. I want a butterfly right there. And there's a pretty butterfly here. There are actually two nice butterflies. Do I want the one that kind of trickles down, or do I want the detailed one? I'm gonna go with the one that trickles down. 
that looks like it's disintegrating. I have a large one of these stamps as well. I was fascinated with that when I looked at their shop. Again, all of these are visible image stamps, and in my book, they have some of the most um, striking stamps that you'll see. Now, this one I want to get right, so I'm going to put this pad underneath here, and I'm going to stand up to press it in. Okay, can you even see that? I'm going to stamp that in. It's meant to look grungy in that it's kind of disintegrating down there, but it's one of those things that you want the black part to really be black and to really stamp well. So let's see how that worked. Oh, perfect. That is perfect. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to kind of put all that stuff aside and before I, I'm going to, we kind of know that my photo is going to go here and there are going to be some paper layers behind it. So what I want to do is see the areas that will still be exposed, kind of particularly around the edges. And that's what I want to do with the shimmer spray. Okay, it's not... Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and splatter it, which is fine. And I'll get some of the splatters on top of this butterfly. And then I'm going to do this gold spray. Let me get my photo out of the way because this I think will spray. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of blot that up. It really leaves a uh, a rather distinct shimmer. It's a shimmer unlike anything I've seen before, and it's gorgeous. And that came in a um, Mind the Scrap kit. And I had never used, it's the first and only Nouveau Shimmer Spray that I've ever used. Okay, I'm done with the background. I'm going to call the background done. I may add some um, splatters or something at the end of all of this. But for right now, I'm going to go with my photo. I pulled a bunch of... Um, foam and I want to add it. I printed my photo borderless. Um, just, I don't usually do that. Um, but I, I thought this photo would look nice that way. So I did it. And I want to go ahead and place the paper layers behind it. And here's where I'm going to kind of add some color. Um, I thought I could get away without distressing 
But actually, let me, instead of distressing with my scissors, let me just ink with my foam tool here. And I'm going to put this on there, flat on the surface. And for this one, I'm actually going to add right at the, um, at the fishtail piece, I'll add some foam. Let me get the photo here. There. I want to be sure that this is parallel because if it isn't, and if I line the photo up with those, those lines, the photo won't be parallel. So this is going to go about right there. Okay. Now I also have this Uh, my title is going to be a yellow piece from Bramble Fox. And it's going to go straight across that clock, which is why it doesn't bother me that the middle of the clock is missing. Um, and so I've tied in all the papers are from my 6x8 pad from uh, Vicki Booten's Fernwood. And I'm just going to kind of slide this there. That works for me. I'll do that. I don't want to get involved over here in covering any of that butterfly up. So that works there. Now the rest of it can be pieced in. Um, I'm going to put the adhesive kind of in the middle, which is probably where it doesn't stick to anything. But I have a couple of pieces of this um, grid paper. that I thought I'd add, and I'm gonna actually add some foam to that. And I wanna ink it too. Oh, I wish, I don't know if you can see how that um, glitter is showing up, that, that shimmer, it's really pretty. Okay, so there, and I've got a bottom piece for that where the, um, it was punched uh, badly, but it, I think that just adds to the distressed look. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And go here. It's really not going to take too much longer here. I can put a piece of flare there too. I've got this piece of flare, this yellow flare that would look quite nice right there. And I've got this green that maybe can slide in under there. And I have another one that's a really grungy grayish green that I thought I'd use as well. Maybe, well, maybe I'll do it as part of this, this thing. Okay, so to get my papers, 
and stuff lined up for that cluster. Let's look at the original. It's got the clock and then this other semicircle, but it's got some strips and then it's got the arrow. The arrow is gonna, the title is gonna go like that. And so the rest of this stuff, I'm just gonna lay in um, at wonky angles. I've got this gray piece that came from a, um, it just appeals to me. It's from uh, the boy collection from Coco Vanilla. I'm losing my, uh, losing the name at the moment. But I thought maybe I could do this like that. And then I can lay this gray piece that's torn maybe on top of that or this scalloped brown piece. I'm gonna go with the scalloped brown piece and I may come back with the gray. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear the back end off the scalloped piece. And then I can add, you can see that it's torn and you can see the inside of the paper, but right now it doesn't look so, um, uh, perfect, <laughs> shall we say. It doesn't look so fresh and new. It looks more grungy. Okay, so now I'm gonna stick this on foam, just a really narrow little piece of foam there, and it's gonna kinda curl it and twist it. I'm gonna sort of mess with it a bit here. And I, I know you may be thinking, but the photo's not distressed or inked or anything. And that's kind of by design. I want the photo to stand out for being kind of um, different from everything else on the background. Okay, there, we've got that on. And because I didn't have the tape on the ends, it looks like it's just lying there. So that's kind of cool. So now I want the summer to go right there. And to be honest, that's probably not gonna stick real well um, until this dries, but I can set it down and we can see where it's going to go. And if it moves and I have to reposition it or anything, I can do that off camera. So I'm gonna press it down there and kind of hold it. Now, you may or may not know that I am kind of a Calvin Ball fanatic. And the first set of rules came out today. I'm filming this on the first because I have surgery tomorrow on the second. And I expect I will be feeling kind of crummy on um, Thursday and Friday, thir uh, Friday when this goes live. So I, I wanted to make it ahead of time. And... So I'm doing the today's Calvin Ball rules. There will be more rules by the time this goes live, but I'm I'm doing it by today's rules, and those are the ones I'm gonna gonna stick by. 
I'm going to put this kind of right there. This is not sticking down there, but I think the arrow will stick on the photo paper. It's all uh, just a little wet. And that's okay. So the rules are uh, date. You have to put a date on your project. So I have a date stamp and I'm going to stamp the date that the photo was taken, which was May of 2009. Um, and then that's one, rule one. Rule two is vellum. So I have this kind of almost metallic vellum that I die cut a gear out of. So I thought maybe the vellum gear might look cool kind of offset on here on the, the grungy flare. I'm kind of spreading around so we don't see a a glop of glue under that vellum. And now, uh, and okay, so, th so there's a vellum, then there's the avocado. There is the, um, <laughs> the ever-present avocado. In fact, the Calvin Ball logo this year has changed to an avocado. So I have this avocado that is an uncopyrighted image I printed on my printer um, probably a couple of years ago, and I have a, a nice supply of them. <laughs> and I just grunged it up a bit, and I'm going to kind of hide it over here next to this green flare. Okay, then the next uh, um, rule, those three were the permanent rules, the rules that'll kind of stick around. Then there are some temporary rules that can be revoked and changed at any time. And the temporary rules are, are the color green, some memorabilia that you have collected, and an airplane. So an airplane has absolutely nothing to do with this story at all, nor does the avocado, but they're not bad images to have when you're layering up um, things like that. I have these tickets. I did collect these. These came from um, they were the draw, uh, prize drawing tickets from, I'm looking for my stapler, from the um, retreat, the Scrapping Reflections retreat in Texas last September. And I kept them to use on layouts knowing that I probably wouldn't use that, use them, the orange color as is um, for many <laughs> layouts. Although I have used them uh, that way. So I just tore the tickets and again, they have nothing to do with this photo or with the story that goes along with it, which is much, but they're not a bad thing to add to a layout. I could possibly just kind of sneak it in, sneak it in there. That's what I'm gonna do. It, they, they, the tickets especially just kind of look like paper layers. 
Okay. Um, I have some real metal gears here that I'm, I'm going to use one of them to achieve that kind of semicircular look that was there. And to do that, I'm going to kind of have to lift up these guys. Okay, I like that. I think that's gonna work well. These are uh, by Tim Holtz, and I got two packages of them. Uh, and I think I had this layout in mind. The layout had already been chosen. Um, so, now I may add, I think I'll do use a smaller one right here. I kind of want something to hide that. That now, when it's all said and done, now the, uh, the way that is, was stamped is beginning to bother me. So let me see what I have that I can kind of disguise that with. And my airplane is moving off of the vellum. So let me get that back, pressed back down. Okay, what do I have that can go there? I have some arrows. Another arrow here. Let me grunge it up, ink it up, and then I'll put it on foam and lay it across there up at the top and it kind of looks like it goes with the other arrow. I have a, another, uh, this is also from that Coco Vanilla um, Boy's Rule, I guess it is. And I have a, this little label right here, which is going to be my title, and it says Mr. Fantastic, and I'm gonna maybe lay it across. I don't wanna lay it down here because that would interfere with the alligator. Let's kind of do that. All right. Now let's grunge this up and we're almost finished. This I know is a long one, but when you do, um, real-time stuff like this, and I, I get a fair number of comments that say they um, they like that, that, that the video is not heavily edited and hiding any of the steps. Um, and I, for me, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's, it's kind of a selfish thing. Um, one is at my um, advanced <laughs> age and level of, of um, stupidity, I don't know that I could keep up with filming part of it and then coming back and filming another and then splicing it all together and all of that stuff just kind of seems, it, it's, it doesn't feel like creating to me, so. I, I kind of have chosen to, to not do it that way. So I'm gonna add these little guys. These are sparkly guys. I'm actually gonna hide this one a little bit more, kind of put it down into that cluster. This is just to add a little bit of sparkle to each cluster. And I know this isn't a cluster yet, but it's fixing to be. So I'm gonna kind of hide that there. These were a gift from Scrappy Adam, and I thank you very much, Adam. I love these. They're like epoxy glitter thingies. And I'm gonna go right there. Just have a little bit of sparkle kind of uh, peeking out from the cluster. Now, in order to make this a cluster, what do I need? I have a button that is kind of teal 
on one side, or teal and two colors of teal, but it's this grungy cardboard-y look on the other side. And I'm gonna use it on that side. Kind of do that right there. And then I'm gonna stamp the date right beside it. Hoping there's enough room. Okay, so that's a good grungy piece. I have some sequins here in a collection called Sea Glass, a mix called Sea Glass, that has some of these coppery colored sequins, and I'm going to add them very sparingly like one here and one here and one here. Not a, um, a big statement with the sequins. In fact, these are kind of satiny. They're not even very um, shiny, but I think they're just the right touch for the, the kind of mood we have going on. I'm gonna do the same thing here, except I'm gonna have them kind of snaking up. And yes, Helen, that's me using brown. I use brown twice, and then I added brown to almost everything else. So brown, as, as most of you know, is not my favorite color. And let's see, so that's there and there, that's probably all I need. Um, what else was I gonna do? I probably want to do something right in here, maybe, um, some splatters of this that will stay glittery. And so I'm gonna cover my photo. Um, let me get this to do that. and let it kind of get heavily on the butterfly and on that paper. That was a rather large bit. Um, and I'll get some over here as a way of distressing the, um, this gray paper, which I didn't do much to. Okay, so I think we're done. And what I like about it, and this may look a little bit strange to other people, but what I like about it is that the photo is so different from the background. It just stands out. And I love that about it. So thank you for watching. I'm sorry this took so long, but I had some fun. <laughs> there you go. There's the detail, and this will be out. Uh, the video will go live on Friday, and I it will be home, so I should be able to post around at that time. You can see the finished layout uh, photograph and close-ups on Instagram. And on Instagram, I'm Scrappy Kathy Y with that extra Y. And I also usually put, um, put these things on my um, Scrappy Kathy Facebook page, which is also Scrappy Kathy Y with that extra Y. Although, if I don't know. I, if you do facebook.com slash Scrappy Kathy Y, that'll get you right to it. 
Anyway, thank you very much. So this gets me six Calvin ball. Oh, I didn't do the date. I didn't do the date. Let me do the date. The date is already set. Let me stamp it. Okay. There we go. And I can actually stamp it up here too. And I can stamp it over here and here and here and here and maybe even here and maybe here. Okay. <laughs> so I think I think we know when that happened. And I get I think I get that point. So I get a point for the date, a point for the vellum, a point for the avocado, a point for green, a point for memorabilia, my tickets there, and a point for the airplane, and a point for the it being a layout at all, and you know, there are a few other kinds of things. If I, I get a point for having made a video of it, so, and a point for posting it on Instagram, and a point for posting it on Facebook, and so on and so forth. So, all the things that I normally do with my layouts. I now get points. So, yay me. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go now. Bye.